Hey, welcome back to another Proven Sales Letter Breakdown video. Today we are on the 81st day, so 19 more to go, except this one. But for today's session, I wanted to break down a sales page that's really modern, and I think it may be running at the moment as well. And it's a, it's a sales page done by uh, a guy who's been who's basically went from like from zero to nothing in just a few years. And I'm talking about Taylor Welsh, uh, one of the founders of Traffic and Funnels. And if you're anything, if you're interested at least a little bit in marketing and copywriting and business and consulting and stuff like that, you might have seen uh, their ads, Traffic and Funnels. They're spending a lot on Facebook and it's super cool guys. And this is actually a productivity course that Taylor has. Uh, so it's not really about marketing or copywriting, but it still uses the same uh, persuasion principles uh, on the sales page that we've seen over and over and over and over again on this uh, on this breakdown challenge. Uh, and that's why I always say that, you know, the best way to study uh, copywriting is to first study the masters because they are the people who basically invented this stuff and then uh, study how the newer generation of great copywriters do it because and marketers also do it because you know nobody invents new stuff pretty much it's it's basically the same thing and as i was going through this uh it's re it's a really good sales page uh but you know i've seen 50 year old or 40 year old sales pages that are more advanced in terms of copywriting yeah, but at the same time, those are selling more complicated products or or subscription products, which are harder to sell. This one's basically selling a uh, $27 front end product. So very, very inexpensive product. And in these cases, you know, you don't have to like, uh, I don't know, create the next end of America. Uh, if you haven't seen end of America, by the way, it's uh, the best performing sales page of all times, at least that I know of. Uh, definitely check it out. I'm going to leave a link below this video in the description section uh, to the entire uh, playlist. So definitely check that out. Uh, it's worth it, believe me. But, you know, you don't need such a super complicated sales page to sell a $27 product. And given that it's only a $27 product, this is an amazing sales page. Even in a vacuum, it's an amazing sales page. It uses emotional triggers and reason why copy and everything. Uh, and the hook itself is so powerful. I love it. Uh, and I'm just going to I'm gonna explain to you uh, why in, in a moment. But let's see what's happening here. Okay, so first of all, we start with multimillionaire consultant reveals. So uh, the pre had basically adds some credibility and the reveals word adds a little bit of shock into it. It's like, hey, finally, a new secret is going to be revealed by someone who knows what they're doing. And then uh, technically, I would say this is the, 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 the primary headline, but I would consider this also, if we have a baby, is it just going to be me uh, as, 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 as a headline itself, because it's so powerful, but I'll get to it in a minute. But uh, let's see, the official main headline says, how a handful of coaches, consultants, and service providers use this coveted framework to double their output while they slice their workday in half. So uh, what's happening here? Well, this is basically a fascination uh, if you're not familiar with fascinations before, go check out my previous videos. Uh, but, you know, this qualifies people, first of all. It's an expanded type of fascination because a fascination usually just builds desire and adds some curiosity to it as well. This expands it, this qualifies people like coaches, consultants, and service providers who are basically the target audience for this promotion. Use this coveted framework so coveted framework basically is the teaser to the unique mechanism, the secret, the, the, the special sauce that makes this solution, this story different compared to others. And then we have benefits. And the first benefit is how to double their output, which a lot of people in this target audience want. They want to achieve more in less time while they slice their workday in half. So just like I said, they want to achieve more while working less. Uh, and then we also have a subhead which says, finally available to entrepreneurs looking to suppress their business goals in record time, finish each week satisfied with their pro with their progress, all while enjoying more than more time for what they care about most. So uh, this basically just increases the perceived value of this whole thing. It uh, adds 
even more benefits which are which all come from research basically i mean how can taylor have come up with this well he did research or his assistants did a lot of research on this topic but uh yeah, I, I like the concept it it qualifies people it immediately cuts through a lot of the noise uh and it's good enough but i think the thing that makes it way better is this thing here if we have a baby is it just gonna be me? And then we have a picture of my life, my wife, Lindsay. So she's the wife of uh, Taylor Welch. And this gets people interested. Like, And I'm sure that, I don't know where you are in your life, but many people who are entrepreneurs or coaches, consultants, they wanna start the business, they're service providers. Um, they have serious trouble with their work-life balance and especially once you start freelancing it's very hard to nail down where to draw the line how much work to take on uh how much work to give up and sometimes it can just end up uh, a few weeks of of 12 uh, hour work days uh, even on sundays it's really common and uh it's a big pain point for a lot of guys, especially especially who are a little bit older, like above 25, let's say between 25 and, and 35, you know, they're starting about, they're thinking about starting a family, they want to have children, they want to get married, and if their wife tells this to them, if we have a baby, is it just going to be me? That's devastating, that's crushing, and uh, the copy really... Um, you know, nails this down with a nice story lead. So we've talked about lead types before, how uh, in the case when, um, you know, the audience is more jaded or they've heard a lot of promises before, and think about it, we're, thinking, we're talking about the high performance entrepreneurship market. I mean, there's a lot of offers out there. So the only way to really stand out is either to use a secret lead or, even better, maybe a story lead. So this is a story lead. It immediately starts with the story so that it grabs people emotionally. And I'm just gonna read like the first few like paragraphs of this. I'm not gonna read everything here because I really do wanna keep this video a bit shorter. So the copy goes like this. One of the worst moments of my life was when my, life, my wife, I don't know why I keep saying my life. Well, because wife equals life in many cases, hopefully. But uh, when my wife, Lindsay, looked me in the eyes and asked me the question, the words felt like a dagger twisting into my soul. You see, I was ready to start a family at that point, but she was right. Every night I'd come home, but, it, but I was never really there. I wasn't present. I wasn't showing up the way she needed me to. My client business was taking up every waking hour, every ounce of energy, everything I had to give. And to top it off, I was stressed out of my freaking mind. Maybe you can relate. Pushing through 10, 12, 18 hour days just to keep things from falling apart, unable to enjoy downtime because you felt uh, short of what you hope to accomplish for the day or week, clueless where you're gonna find time to take on more clients or implement new strategies to scale. It was the darkest hour for me, but also what ultimately led to a breakthrough that changed everything for me. So what's happening here? Well, as I said, we start with a story lead. We have this genius emotional hook. We have a picture of uh, that makes everything relatable. We start by ex uh, uh, explaining the problem. So the problem is, you know, uh, the wife came to the guy uh, and she basically... I wouldn't say it's a warning because it's not a warning, but uh, but she definitely sounded uh, desperate and disappointed. And who wants to disappoint their new wife, right? Uh, so then we have a little bit of dimensionalization. Every night I'd come home, but I was never really there. You know, uh, she was alone. And if you like, uh, there were some studies uh, about people who got divorced, and one of the key things were from the woman's side uh, is that they felt uh, alone. They felt ignored they felt uh, invisible, they felt like, you know, they were left alone to care for the child uh, and then the guy went off to work all the time. Uh, typical thing. And this is surprisingly, uh, or not surprisingly, uh, a very common case in, um, in, in divorces. But we get into a little dim dimensionalization so that the reader actually starts uh, you know, feeling this. And then we we have some head nodding copy. Uh, maybe you can relate. You know, we have one, two, three, various life situations that are very common in these overachieving type of entrepreneurs who have 
trouble with their work-life balance. Their, their work is starting to take off, but it's hard to keep the balance as well. And then, you know, we also have a tease for the unique mechanism of the solution uh, because Taylor says, but also this ultimately led to a breakthrough that changed everything for me. So tease the unique mechanism of the solution. And then we get a little pin the dream section as well. A good lead should build emotional uh, rapport with people, should tease what they get if they uh, read this. It should also tease some curiosity as well, like discover what the secret is. It never gives it away uh, right off the bat. Uh, but it also builds a lot of desire. So here the desire building is done the following way. Imagine how it would feel accomplishing as much it leaves everyone convinced you've cloned yourself to get through three times as much as anyone else. Except you're doing it stress-free without needing to sacrifice what matters most to you. Uh, what matter matters to you most? Okay, I think this is like a duplicate here. Uh, that might sound far-fetched, but you'll see in a second. So we have a little bit of objection handling here because we've made the promise uh, and at this point, our audience is super skeptical. So we follow it up with some proof, right? Promise proof. We've covered this all the time on, on, on this channel. So we have some proof elements. Uh, we have some copy that sets expectations. This is kind of still part of the lead. This is the last part of the lead. And it says, and I'm going to share exactly how these people did that right here on this page. So don't go anywhere. You know, this grabs people a little bit, this uh, uh, convinces them to stay here, gives them a reason why they should stay here. So then, uh, as with any good sales letter, we start describing the problem. And the key here is to establish a deep level of emotional rapport with people, because the only way for them to buy something is to uh, experience a little bit of belief shifting uh, and experience the pain itself. So they become aware of the pain, right? Think about yourself. If you if you don't feel the urge to do something, if something doesn't hurt, usually you don't want to invest resources to solve it, right? The only way most people make decisions uh, or buy something or do something is if they're missing something, something hurts, something is a problem, and they want to fix that problem. So just like any good sales letter, we start with a little bit of uh, authority build off. You know, hi, I'm Taylor Welch and uh, I started this company. And, you know, we also have a picture that highlights how, you know, he's this authority guy, but it doesn't really give away too much authority. So it's not, it, not, it doesn't come up as, as bragging. And I love how Taylor's copy, if he wrote it, I'm not exactly sure whether he wrote it or not, but probably he did because he, to my knowledge, he is a copy guy. Um, and, uh, Fun fact, he actually started in Copy Chief, and I have this Copy Chief t-shirt on me right now. Nobody writes alone. Go check it out if you are uh, if you want to join a nice community of copywriters. In fact, I'm going to leave a link to it, okay, below it, below this. You can check it out if you're interested. It was just definitely life-changing for me. But Taylor also started there, and in just a few years, you know, he became this superstar copywriter. Uh, but... Uh, I love how his his style is very emotional. It has a lot of stories. It's it's very vulnerable. And whenever you are willing to be vulnerable, you can build a lot of rapport with people because it makes you real. It makes you non bullshitty. Especially nowadays where everybody's faking so many things, uh, people crave realness. Uh, and one of the best ways to achieve that is by being vulnerable. Um, so we start with a little in media stress type of vulnerable story, which means that we start in the middle of the action, how, you know, they were burned out and then we got the little rewind. So like what happens uh, before that and after it, uh, this is the, a little bit of nightmare story part. So, you know, it's not enough to just uh, mention the problem. You also have to contextualize it. You, you have to dimensionalize this. You really have to describe how you felt, how the situation was, you know, that's why the racks to riches types of stories or like the discovery stories are so powerful. And we actually have a discovery story here as well. So basically the whole argument goes that, you know, we were successful, but we were suffering uh, in terms of work-life balance, uh, everything, like we were going all in. Uh, we discussed this with my wife, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I never imagined how hard it would be. And then, you know, we were actually quite successful. And at this point, I love how he qualifies people by saying, uh, doesn't matter how big your business is, even if you're still stuck under 10K a month, no doubt you've had times where it felt like the demands were too much to handle. So this kind of like 
mm, in a soft sense, uh, disqualifies people who are making less than 10k a month. But, uh, you know, he starts the nightmare story and he describes a lot of key pain points that our target audience can definitely relate to. So it's it's really powerful to include these because like uh, you never know which one is going to give that big impact. It's going to have that big impact actually because like saying overwhelmed with 10, 12, even 18 hour days that leave you completely drained. Maybe this is the one that connects with people. It's the reverse thing to what we do with fascinations because with fascinations we uh, build desire and you never know which bullet is going to um, be the one thing that knocks people off the fence. And here, you never know which of these bullets are going to be the one that uh, make the reader feel like, oh my God, you understand me, so now I trust you. It's all about establishing trust. Uh, so then, it's not enough to just mention the pain points and maybe you know describe them in one page. You also have to agitate the pain. Uh, and, and by Taylor, so Taylor opted to do this in the first person uh, from a first person perspective, uh, which is smart because it's more compliant regarding Facebook, for example. But also, uh, like it doesn't come across as like uh, lecturing or something because a lot of people, if they have these problems, they don't want to necessarily like keep hearing about it from others. Uh, like, hey, you are messing your life up. They're gonna feel like leave me alone, I don't care, like, like, who are you to tell me something like that. But by him opening up, being vulnerable, you know, uh, he creates much more rapport with this. So we agitate the pain at this point. And he has a lot of honesty here to build that emotional report. Like, check this part out. Uh, entrepreneurs are never quite satisfied. We're always striving for the next level, more income, better clients, greater impact. When you have these massive goals, but you're not hitting them, uh, where you're failing to accomplish what you set out to do, it really screws with you. Chris and I let so many things that weren't a priority completely derail us and steer us off course. And it ended up being very costly. It easily cost us seven figures. But of course, it wasn't, it wasn't just business being impacted by this. The toll on our personal lives was even greater. I was soul crushing. It was soul crushing to see Chris missing out on special moments with his family, forced on too many occasions to say, sorry, daddy has to work today and my relationships were almost non-existent. I was home, but I wasn't at home. I was on the phone all the time, switching from one entrepreneurial fire to the next. It's only within hindsight I realized how much we were hurting the people we loved the most. We were both pushed to the point where we started having conversations like, I don't know, maybe we should just pull back. Maybe we're okay with just a, a tiny slither of this pie. So, um, at this point, we are starting to sit, shift into something called the moment of highest tension. So think about it. Any good story, series, movie, anything you want, or game even, uh, has a moment of highest tension where everything seems lost and you have to make a change. Otherwise, everything will just crumble and basically that's it. Game over, GG. Uh, so I think this is the moment of highest tension here. Uh, and Taylor even says, uh, what's... Uh, that's when it became blindingly clear this was make or break. It was time to make a decision. Either drop out ambition and sell it for less than we were capable or figure out a way to accomplish more chill, more, <laughs> while claiming back time for what matters most. So this is all because of those fateful words from Lindsay's lips, right? So uh, then he op they opted for the latter, right? So uh, we have a little implied proof element of how they've helped a lot of people. But basically from here on out, uh, we get a little teaser of, hey, we discovered something and we're, we're gonna give it to you, like what we discovered. But first, let's talk about uh, what keeps most entrepreneurs stuck accomplishing only a fraction of what they're capable of. So uh, it's really important to have these open loops and, uh, and um, Taylor's copy involves this many, many times. So, but before that, it's important we dig into, or I'll tell you more about this uh, in a second. But first we have, at, I counted at least like three or four of these uh, in this uh, sales letter. And keep in mind, this isn't really that long compared, uh, like when it comes to a long form sales letter, it's only 17 pages and the copy is like, uh, there's not, not that much copy on each word, on each page. So uh, from here on out, we shift into the 
belief shifting part because now we've got people's attention we've got their interest as well uh, but as I said remember a few minutes ago I mentioned that persuasion and, and only happens when you uh, reframe some people's beliefs or myths and many times people have a lot of false beliefs especially in an area especially in and basically um, well, nowadays, when there's so many information out there, so much information, so much information overwhelm, right? So uh, the copy mentions this, and it's really smart because it says, you've probably tried a planner or a system or some hacks to become more effective with your daily output and productivity. Heck, I've tried everything I could get my hands on the past six plus years. Some of it helped, much of it didn't, but nothing really got you all the way there, right? And there's a reason for that. Although uh, what you've been doing up until now may, may not be entirely broken, it's incomplete. You may even be 99% of the way there, but 1% of missing. And what's this 1%? Well, it's the secret that we discovered. It's the secret sauce that, we, uh, that got teased in the beginning as well. Uh, it's like this coveted framework, right? Which uh, appeals to that 1%. And everybody wants to learn the 1%, the secret of the 1%. Like, what do they do differently? So, we start reframing their false beliefs. Uh, we discredit a few other inferior solutions. And I love how there's also a few good anal analogies. Like, when it comes to the 1%, for example, a great an analogy is, imagine a car. But just one circuit's but uh, just one circuit's not connected, so the brakes don't work. It's just one small thing, but doesn't that make all the difference? So yeah, this this makes people like think, and this makes them feel like okay, that makes sense. I can understand that, even though the car is like okay, like from a technical perspective, it's it's fine. But like if there's one thing. Uh, isn't connected with the brakes, that's a problem because I cannot brake and I'm gonna crash. And uh, the good thing about analogies is that they can be really powerful in, in uh, taking complex ideas like high performance life hacking and uh, distilling it down into something that's easily, that easily connects with people. So then we get uh, a little description of the unique mechanism of the problem. So uh, what, what, what's missing from the uh, current imperfect solutions. Uh, we have more descriptions of the unique mechanism of the problem, plus a few analogies. And then we get uh, the discovery story. So there are several mini stories in this one, but this is the discovery story in which basically uh, Taylor, along with Chris, discovered something, you know. It wasn't overnight, but they discovered um, something new, something that takes them to that magical 1%. And uh, as a result of this discovery, but notice how we still don't know exactly what this discovery is. That's why there's an urge to read forward, right? But this is intentional. You don't want to give it away. Uh, so because of the disco this discovery, here's what, you know, uh, I, as, as Taylor, managed to accomplish. You know, fast forward to fall of 2018, and we were at a level unlike ever before. So uh, look at this. They're happy. They're, uh, they seem rested. Everyone's laughing. This is basically the pain the dream part. Uh, and it also acts as a segue to the introduction of the product itself. So it's very important to uh, have these pain the dream elements to uh, build even more emotional desire because Remember, you've given people a lot of um, um, problems, like you described the problem, you agitated it. Maybe they, they, they're feeling shitty at this point, right? So you gotta give them a solution. You gotta, um, their emotional state is, uh, is disturbed at this point. So it's your job, if you disturb them, it's your job to also soothe them. And uh, the best way to do that is by uh, including these, these uh, pain the dream sections, like, hey, you know, because of this, discovery that I made, uh, I'm able to finish each day feeling proud and accomplished, uh, all these good benefits. And naturally, this is the point, point where you um, kind of introduce the product itself, right? Because their emotional um, state now is more positive. They start visualizing how would their life, the reader's life would look like if they actually, um, if, if they actually achieve this, right? Uh, so then we have uh, the product itself and we also get an introduction to the unique selling proposition of the product so what makes it special 
So this productivity pack V2, the USP of it is the definitive system for experts who want to accomplish more in a fraction of the time. So this is like, who is it for? Uh, for experts, it is the definitive system. So it's, it's different compared to anything else. And it's the only system basically that gives you the tools to accomplish more in the fraction of the time, right? So it's a strong USP. And then uh, from here on out, everything's super templatized. And that's, again, it, it's so funny as I was reading this, you know, I analyzed a lot of ads here, which were even a hundred years old, link to the uh, the whole playlist in the description section, check them out uh, from John Caples, for example, or Claude Hopkins. Uh, these are super old ads. And uh, they use the same formula in a sense, you know, uh, and from here on out, it's pretty formulaic. It's expanded a little bit because nowadays you have much more competition, especially on the internet, and you have to up your game in order to stay in the game. But, uh, but you know, I've seen this over and over again in, in, in most sales pages. Uh, the hard part in the sales page is always coming up with the great headline, the great hook, and the great big idea. Here, the big idea is that, you know, uh, if we're going to have a baby, is it just going to be me? So, like, this segues into the uh, lead part itself and the story of it and everything. Uh, but from here on out, it's pretty formulaic. So we have uh, a hero shot, like um, a mock-up of, hey, look at this, I'm teaching you something. There's like a checklist and there's this cool logo, so it must be really valuable. We have a high level overview of what the product is. We have reason why, this is more of an advanced thing, like, hey, why did we actually create this product? And the copy says, uh, the only reason we recorded the training in the first place was because after teaching it to a few members of my team and witnessing their performance take off, it became blindingly obvious. We had to share this with our clients to help them get even better results in far less time. So now, whether someone new joins in our, our team, this is literally the first thing we got them to go through. So it makes sense, right? Uh, and it actually... Uh, increases the perceived quality of this course because people feel like, wow, this is like kind of like the internal training of Traffic and Funnels, which is this super successful company. So uh, we have the reason why copy. Then we have an, another open loop. Remember I mentioned about open loop uh, loops and this one says, I'll share the incredible results people are experiencing in just a sec, but first, here's what you'll find inside. So this teases kind of like the social proof and then uh, a, a mandatory section of any offer presentation is we have a little overview of the features. So what are included in the program itself? Then most of the real estate is spent on benefits because people don't care about features ultimately. They care about benefits and what those features can do for them and how those benefits are going to produce even more benefits in their lives. So we have some future pays benefits, which means that uh, we present the benefits in a way that that kind of assumes how their life looks like after they've bought the product. Um, so then we have some fascinations. Again, fascinations, critical element in uh, any type of uh, copywriting project. I, I, I basically covered fascinations in literally almost every single one of my uh, proven sales letter breakdown videos. So then, you know, this is, this is because this, basically this is the uh, unique promise, what this does for you. Then we have to follow it up with unquestionable proof. And boom, what do you, what, what do you see here? Like a lot of testimonials, right? Uh, so this immediately suits people a little bit. It, it, it makes them feel like, oh, okay, so uh, I see this, this sounds cool and all, but like, uh, oh, okay, wow, it worked for so many people, so many different people. And these images don't really seem like, um, you know, those, those fake images. So this adds social proof. Uh, then we have, uh, hey, but wait, it gets even better type of element uh, by saying that, you know, all these testimonials were just for version one, but notice how this is version two, right? Wow, advanced persuasion tip right there, version two. It assumes that it's something more advanced, something that already had a prototype. So uh, we get reasons why behind version two, like why version two was actually born. Um, and um, uh, then we have something which is again, very templatized. 
before revealing the price itself because at this point people are are wondering like okay so how much is this going to cost and the copy even says it like at this point you're probably wondering what this is going to cost so instead of giving them the price up front what always happens in in these types of offer structures is that we um we build up the value of of what this can do for you in real life we uh contrast the real price the that gonna get that's gonna get revealed later to all the value that that you could get from this so notice how how uh, taylor does it here even even though more than 2,381 of our clients paid as much as 10,800 to gain access to this coveted framework, I don't believe the barrier to this material needs to be that high. So uh, price anchor right off the bat, $10,000, $11,000. Wow, that's expensive. So then imagine the relief when people discover that it's only $27, right? That's the reason why price anchoring is so uh, powerful, even in negotiations everywhere. So... We have this, uh, this. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't even know how how people call it. Like uh, price drop down of hey, you know, this is the highest anchor. But then I was thinking three seventy nine. But then I thought, you know, maybe one ninety nine. But then I thought not even that. You should only pay one forty nine. But then I said, ah, oh, even that's too much. Uh, and then boom, only twenty seven. But like I love it how how Taylor does it here. Uh, instead of um, giving them the price after this. At this point, most people would just give the price, right? But instead of giving them the price, he follows it up with social proof immediately because, uh, because, and, and this is actually super, super legit social proof because it shows how the normal price. So at this point, people know that, you know, most marketers are doing, uh, uh, like price drop downs, but, to showcase that the real, real price of this product is uh, 149, uh, he actually uh, provides a few testimonials uh, that all say, you know, 149. It seems a little bit weird, to be honest. Like, 149 is a steal. Like, there must have been some uh, specific question how people asked, how how uh, Chris or uh, Taylor asked people this, so that they reply in this very, very formulaic way. Uh, all, all um, underlying the uh, the price drop element here, but the the gist of it is that you know we have a really nice uh, price drop down here, and then the final price uh, is just a single payment of twenty seven dollars, and then you have a big ass call to action button with uh, like explicit instructions. Uh, but you know, as most good offers, it's not enough. Uh, you need bonuses as well to uh, really make these offers more powerful. And then we immediately get a bonus as well, a free gift, super valuable attaining. Uh, and this is similar to Magalogs, but think about it. If you've been watching my videos, for example, if you watch my previous video from Carlene Anglade Cole, if not, definitely watch it. It's great. It's amazing. Uh, notice how there for just a simple, well, not simple because it's, it's a few hundred dollars, uh, it's basically a supplement pack, but we're giving people like 17 different types of bonuses and supersized containers and all these special reports and complimentary everything, right? Uh, we're overwhelming them with bonuses. Compare that, which is like an old ad, to this, which only gives one bonus. It seems a little bit lackluster. So I think the one thing that could be improved definitely on this is to include like three more bonuses, seriously, because many times people buy the offer uh, just for the bonus, just for a single bonus. So it's just like with fascinations, you never know which one is going to connect with people the most. And sometimes they buy the product because of the bonus. And one bonus is, I think it's, uh, it's, it's too little in this uh, case, but obviously this page is still way, 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 way better than most offers out there. So I'm sure that it converted really well. Uh, but this is just one area of opportunity where uh, things could be improved even better or even more. So um, at this point, we have an empowering question like, hey, are you ready to accomplish more in your business in a fraction of the time? Uh, we have some ordering instructions here. Uh, we have another call to action and then we have a product overview. This is very common like to showcase people what they get. And also a lot of people are scrolling through this. So as they're scrolling, you know, their eyes are going to catch this. They're going to just see that, okay, big headline, 
um, okay, maybe they read a few of these fascinations. They notice that nobody's going to read all the social proof, but they're going to notice that, wow, okay, so it has some proof as well. Uh, they're going to see that it's it's $28 or $27, cool. They're going to see the bonus. And then this is the place where they're actually going to see like what's included. So they got the brand new revamped Productivity Pack V2. And maybe if they start wondering why is it revamped? Well, then they're going to scroll up and they're going to read the part that says, you know, this is just the beginning. Uh, I think it was here. Yeah. So even better, you know, you get a version two with it. And the same thing regarding the bonuses, regarding the morning formula normalization training. If people are more interested in this, then they're going to scroll up and read more. And remember, the more they read, the more likely they are to convert. Easy stuff. So um, then we have a little bit of reverse psychology that's going on here. We have the guarantee, which is mandatory. And I love how this isn't just a simple guarantee, but it has its own reason why. And it has its own like explanation of why we are committed to your success as a customer. So these types of guarantees, I, I've seen this type of guarantee uh, in, in many, uh, many places uh, nowadays, uh, but it's, it's powerful because it makes people feel like you care, uh, which, you, which you should, by the way. Then we have another call to action. Notice it's in the first uh, person. We have some urgency. Again, every good offer structure has to have some urgency. Um, how alternative solutions are inferior. Again, this is pretty common stuff. And uh, finally, the final part is kind of uh, something called the crossroads close. And I saw this uh, at... Uh, many of uh, Ramit Sethi's uh, sales pages, but many other places as well. But this specific style, it was pretty common a few years ago, maybe it probably is, it still is. But what happening? what's happening here is that you get two choices. One is like, you're going to just stay afloat, you're going to uh, keep continuing and s keep continue the way you've been living so far and, and, and you're gonna keep suffering, or you make this change and then you're going to experience all these amazing benefits and, 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 and everything like that. So then the perfect time uh, for another call to action after the uh, crossroads close. And then we have some frequently asked questions. Again, very important in a sales page. It seems like, why should I include that? But it just raises conversions by 20, 30%. Uh, and it's easy stuff. Whatever comes up intuitively or from experience that... Um, you know, most people that, that act as uh, barriers for purchasing for most people, you should definitely cover here. And usually the three common objections are like, hey, is this right for me? Uh, what do I get? And, uh, and, you know, will it work for me or something like that? Um, or like, hey, like, do I don't have the money, which always means that you haven't given them enough value. So then we have more social proof and one more call to action button. So yeah, uh, it might seem long uh, on the surface, but trust me, guys, it's it's pretty formulaic. Uh, and uh, after breaking down 80 other uh, proven sales letters, you know, I, the, the 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 all the trends or all, all the uh, various. Uh, Templatized elements are definitely visible here. Obviously, each great sales page needs uh, a good big idea and it needs a unique hook and it needs powerful stories and stuff like that. But especially from the uh, from the uh, offer introduction, it's pretty formulaic stuff, but it's powerful. Like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This stuff works. It works really, really, really well. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Damn, we still uh, managed, like I didn't manage to make this video so short, but hey, it is what it is. I love doing these um, breakdowns. And if it takes this long, then it takes this long. But I hope you uh, enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to like the video right now. Also subscribe to the channel if you're new and also click the little notification uh, icon as well, because that way you'll be the first to know when I release a new video like this one. And also share this with others in case you're, they're interested, maybe they're interested in productivity, maybe they're interested in copywriting, marketing, sales, anything like that. Um, and uh, I definitely appreciate it if you do. Also, leave a comment with anything. Uh, uh, if something resonated with you, uh, definitely let me know. I respond to every single comment. So thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.